Here we are at the Knox Coal Mine Disaster Site, which occurred in 1959. Thank you for taking the time to return to my channel and view this. This is probably the most well-known disaster that occurred in modern times. These cliffs here, this is the former Lehigh Valley Railroad tracks. And this is what occurred on January 22, 1959. You can see the edge of the rail ties there, which would have been right up here. I'm standing roughly where these flags are uh, up here is where the break-in occurred. People don't realize that this was actually concreted and backfilled. This would have been the river shore back in 1959. So where I'm actually standing is the old river break-in. So I'm going to go down to the water's edge here and just talk about this disaster. There's a little tombstone marker in a sense. It says this is where the Knox coal mine disaster occurred at this spot and 12 men died. Beautiful little rock face. Up there would have been the river slope of the Knox Coal Company, which was leased by the Pennsylvania Coal Company. And 80 some men started their shift on a very mild January 22, 1959. And what's absolutely terrible about this disaster is, you know, most people think it occurred right there. There is a lot of acid mine drainage there, yes. Um, but like I said, the river broken right up here and this, this was not a hill. This is all man-made in response to the disaster. But it was in a uh, very mild uh, January and upstream there was a lot of melt coming down the river. The river's coming from right to left. Down there is Plains Township and up there is the city of Scranton. So what occurred was there was a lot of melt and because there was a lot of melt the river went up in height. There was a lot of ice chunks because the ice flow was breaking up. A lot of ice chunks the size of small cars floating down here, just big ice shelves. Unfortunately, what had happened was these men up there, on the other side of that rock face on top of that hill, went down the river slope. They were mining coal underneath the river. What's sad is this was a corrupt operation. There was mafia links, just greed and corruption. Not per se on the miners' parts. They were getting paid uh, good money. Pretty sure they knew what they were doing. Um, they were supposed to leave anywhere from 50 to 35 feet of rock underneath the river. And they were paying off mine inspectors, to my knowledge. Mine inspectors weren't even going underground. They were being paid off. They broke through some dink like 18 inches of rock underneath the riverbed. So it's absolutely terrible because if this had occurred, as you can see how far that is, if this had occurred when the river was, this is about two feet according to the river gauge um, in Wilkes-Barre, it wouldn't have been that big of a ordeal. You know, yeah, they would have punched a big hole on the riverbank. They would have had a shutdown operation. They would have come in here and sealed up with concrete and all types of stuff, and it definitely would have possibly closed the mine, definitely would have delayed it, uh, the reopening of the mine by many weeks, if not months. You know, they would have got a fine, there would have been an investigation, but no one probably would have been killed. They just would have daylighted the mine, maybe, meaning cave and what occurred. And all of a sudden, look, there's the sky, because uh, we just opened up to the surface. Um, they were mining the Pittston vein of coal, and shortly before noon, 
the river broken. And what's absolutely terrible is there was two men working on the lower level of the mine, according to Robert Walensky's book. What a great book. You gotta read that one on the Knox Mine Disaster. I had the chance to talk to Robert Walensky a few years ago. True gentleman. True gentleman. He is like one of the best anthracite coal historians alive. There's two men working on the lower. I don't know if it was the Marcy vein or there was another vein below that, but they were like 300 to 400 plus feet iron ground. They were working on the pump and the sump. Um, they had their Western Electric, most likely Western Electric mine phones disconnected for unknown reasons. So when that river broke in, they had no communication to the upper levels. So that water came rocking down and filled their lower level up immediately. So those poor guys probably thought there was like nuclear Armageddon from the Soviets or whatever. Definitely thought the world was ending and unfortunately for them it, it was ending, poor souls. So those the two guys got probably instantly killed. And then it was a mad dash because they heard just whooshes sound like two freight trains. The initial collapse and then the water rushing in. And all of a sudden you have water in the high 20s, low 30s rushing in. Taking out timbers, smashing gob walls, just causing instant cave-ins everywhere. It's, you know, flooding 360 degrees here, just pouring out. Ultimately, this hole, which was one-sixth the entire channel you see here of the Susquehanna River, was flowing into the Knox coal mine. Think about that. One-sixth of well, this entire channel was flowing into the mine. It created to like 10 billion gallons of water. Filled in for like three days until the pressure equalized, which is astonishing. You think about that one sixth of this channel just flowing into man-made workings and what's crazy is these men were running in all different directions all the way up those mountains over there the base of those mountains is schooly shaft in exeter some made their escape there some would have ran over that hill about three quarter of a mile to the Ewing Colliery. Just a mad dash. I mean, these guys were running around with small electric mine lamps on top of their heads. And they're in freezing cold water. Uh, you got live electrical down there. I can't imagine, you know, if anyone got electrocuted or whatever. But it was a race against time because this is all honeycombed. And it's just a labyrinth of confusing tunnels. And over here, where I'm zooming, about a fifth to a sixth of a mile is the old Eagle air shaft. And that almost has a cursed history too, because after doing some research, there's a disaster, there's two disasters there in 1866 and 1871 that killed several dozen miners combined. Uh, I think one was a methane explosion and the other one was a black damp suffocation of multiple miners. So that was supposed to be backfilled, uh, I believe back in like 1912, but they didn't. And luckily for the miners this day, that was not backfilled. And this gentleman here, get his photo. His name was Amiato Pencotti. And I did take this image off of Google from the Knox Mine Disaster documentary, which I have not been able to see, unfortunately. I had work that night that they showcased this documentary, and I, they haven't released it on DVD yet, but I hear this is a great documentary. Now, this gentleman ran to the Eagle Air Shaft. I'm going to do a video on that next. It was long abandoned. He ran with a... A group of men, but I think he was the only one that got to the bottom of the Eagle air shaft. And this was an abandoned air shaft. Because it was a dangerous air shaft. And he was clearing decades and decades of debris out of it. And it's 50 feet vertical. This is an Italian immigrant. I think he was a son of immigrants. 
he, in a fit of adrenaline and survival, in an act of heroism to save his fellow miners, dozens of miners, there was like 80 some miners underground during the time of this disaster, he climbed vertically up solid rock, 50 plus feet. He ripped his fingernails out in doing so. I mean, ripped his fingernails out. He chewed them down, like, like in the rock. Just blood. Couldn't imagine the pain in addition to just the nails. He's probably all lacerated. He gets up alone, runs out, runs over to the break-in site, I'm, sh I'm sure. He's probably the first person to see the river break-in occurring where I'm standing. And a state trooper was on the tracks and he ran up to the state trooper and he was in such a, uh, a, a confused state because he was so pumped up with adrenaline and shock and horror of what had just happened um, that the state trooper thought he was a drunk. And then the state trooper realized that, hey, this guy is a coal miner and he led rescuers to the Eagle Air Shaft and they were able to drop a rope down that and they were able to pull out 33 people. And there he is with the Carnegie Hero Award, Heroism Award. So they dropped a rope down the Eagle Air Shaft and by the time they were getting the last of the miners out of the Eagle Air Shaft, water was filling. They, they were like up to their waist in freezing cold water with ice flowing in, all types of mine debris and everything. So literally, if any time was wasted, there would have been more than 12 people killed. Now, people always talk about how this was the end of mining in the Wyoming Valley, how this was the end of deep mining in the Wyoming Valley. That's true, but this was just the final nail in the coffin. This was just the excuse for the collieries to get out of the industry finally after 120 plus years. Because people don't realize a, this backfill occur, but before the backfill was put in here, it was concreted. Before it was concreted, it's like 50 or 150 feet wide of concrete and 50 plus feet deep or something of concrete. It was, it was very extensive, the cap that went over the actual hole. Um, the federal government came in here, in the state, obviously. They pumped all the water out of the mud. They pumped all the water out of the Knox mud. Which is astonishing. There's photos, just Google it. You can see all the coal hopper cars. See the Lehigh Valley Railroad here rerouted the track right off of the um, the tracks right there. They just they 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 broke up the track and they put it towards the hole, they angled it, and they uh, ghost rid like they just were bumping empty coal hopper cars, those big steel open cars, they were bumping them into the hole. If you go on YouTube, you can see all the videos. It's pretty remarkable. The coal hoppers were going into the hole here and just swirling down like a toilet bowl and just getting sucked into the mine. It was bending them. These, I, these things are huge. These are full-size coal uh, train cars. They were throwing in small mine cars, many hundreds of those, bays of hail, uh, of hay, not hail, sorry. And um, nothing was plugging that gap. It just went on for three days sucking up. But when this disaster was done, they coffer dammed the river here and they worked all through the spring and summer. Like I said, they pumped it out. They went down there, took photos. They were investigating. They actually went looking for the bodies of the deceased 12 miners. They never found any remains, which is crazy. But uh, if anyone's ever been in a mine, you can know how vast it is and the force of the water and all the rock falls that occurred. They could have been washed until different collieries, different levels. Um, so unfortunately, 12 men are still entombed forever down here, which is a complete travesty. And no one got in that much trouble. Like I said, this was a very corrupt operation, the Knox Coal Company, the River Slope. Mine in the Pittston vein should have had 35 to 50 feet of coal. And the Susquehanna River is actually, after just looking online, I was a little astonished by this. I'm thinking this was like a, a recent glacial river, like a glacial melt type river. It's not. 
it would explain why I found trilobites in the riverbed before, um, which is an ancient life form. This thing, this river, goes back to like Pangaea, goes back before the formation of coal, when the first veins of coal were being formed, like 400, 500 million years old, the Susquehanna River is. It's one of the oldest rivers in the world. And it's unstable because it could be like a false roof in the mine when you're under mining the river because there's a lot of boulders, there's a lot of glacial melt from the repeated glacial ages and just from erosion. But what you think is the roof is not necessarily the roof. There's a lot of gravel. So they could have hit a false roof would have almost been like a quicksand um, collapse. That's maybe why they, they, they hit how they hit. Maybe they thought there was more roof. This is uh, January 25 of 2022. I was here on the day of the disaster um, anniversary. But my camera video didn't come out as I wish, so I returned here today. So next we're going to walk up to the Eagle air shaft. I'm going to take a video of that to give you an idea as to what Mr. Pincotti had to go through. Be sure to check that video out. Thank you for watching this.